Support for Stepping Out comes in part from the Kristovich family in honor of Mary Lou and Bill Kristovich. This program is sponsored in part by the Eugenie and Joseph Jones Family Foundation, a local foundation proud to support the arts and culture in the greater New Orleans area. Scott Laborde and welcome to Steppin' Out with updates from the local restaurant, arts, and entertainment scenes. Joining me, Poppy Tucker, host of Louisiana Eats on WWNO Radio. Hey, Miss Poppy. Hello. Hello. Hey, there. hey. <laughs> Ian McNulty, food writer for the Times Picayune, New Orleans Advocate. Hey, Mr. Ian. Hello, dear. Hi. <laughs> Doug McCash is with us, and he, of course, <laughs> covers the arts and culture scenes. Hello. Also for the Times Picayune, New Orleans Advocate, of course. Hey, Doug. <laughs> and Alan Smason of theatercriticism.com and the Crescent City Jewish. Jewish news. Hi. Hello, Alan. And Poppy, more Oktoberfest news, eh? Well, we talked about Oktoberfest at Middendorf's last week, where the party continues. But you can celebrate Oktoberfest right here in the city at Koshan Butcher through October. They've got such fun things going on over there. Well, you've got the all-important pretzel, you know, and their pretzel <laughs> You can have it stuffed with ham and cheese, oh. and there's beer mustard to dip it in, and you can wash it down with German beers that they brought in on tap, especially for Oktoberfest. And, of course, there's potato pancakes. There's house-made Weistwurst, which is a veal and pork sausage, really delicious. Pork schnitzel with mustard cream. And, you know, anybody who loves their boudin balls, how about some kraut? Und Brat Balken. That's uh, fried kraut and bratwurst balls. So their manager over there, great guy, Zach Shelton, has curated some wild German cocktails for you. Like, how about a combo of red wine, Jägermeister, and plum brandy? <laughs> There's German <laughs> wines available. And one thing to remember about Koshan Butcher is that you've got all this outdoor space. Basically, it's almost like an indoor-outdoor space. So it's perfect for safe dining, and you can get it to go. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much, Poppy. And, Ian, we turn to you with uh, Oktoberfest, but in a low-key this year, right? Well, Oktoberfest is canceled this year in New Orleans, as it is in Germany. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is still October, and we are still smelling October with a K over at Deutsch's House. Uh, Deutsch's House, of course, is where we usually find the biggest uh, regional Oktoberfest around. Uh, but more, more to its, its uh, character, Deutsch's House is, is a club. It is a, a, a German cultural club here in New Orleans with a long history. Oktoberfest is usually its most important event. Uh, but throughout the year, it continues on with operations and classes and sessions and uh, a, a bar serving great drinks and a kitchen. And so they're continuing that through October, modified a bit. They've expanded their hours. They've expanded their menu. And they're setting up uh, a little more accommodations outside. So... This is not Oktoberfest. I can't stress that enough. <laughs> this is not going to a big festival. This is not uh, the usual stage and programming. What this is is Deutsch's House being open, uh, as it always is in its club capacity, open to the public, uh, to come in for a family-friendly setting, mostly outdoors, and uh, get a great German beer and a good plate of homemade food from uh, the uh, the cooks that have been working away there all year and expanding their programming, like I said, just a little bit for this month. Peggy, I went by last week to check it out, and I was really impressed by what I saw. A, the beer was delicious. <laughs> the food was great. But it was more than that. It was the company. It really did feel like uh, you know, a cultural organization pushing through this, as we've seen many others do, 
under different terms. Uh, and what was really impressive was the way that everyone who showed up seemed to be uh, e eager and happy to meet everybody halfway. The social distancing was very good. People just brought their own chairs and set up under one of those live oak trees. I saw people taking their kayaks down the Bayou St. John right on the other side of the building, uh, pulling up and, and coming in for a beer, then hitting the, the Bayou again. Uh, it was really nice. It was very low key, it was mellow, uh, and it was a lot of fun. And just frankly, it was refreshing to get a little bit of a taste of what we usually have this time of year from Deutsch's house and to see them carrying on. So bravo and, to them. Uh, yes, getting even a taste, you know, work, works these days. <laughs> also, I, I understand I no live Peggy. bands, but they're piping in music, right? <laughs> yeah, there's recorded music. If you go inside, there's very little going on inside. It's basically where you just go and pick up your beer. Mm -hmm. uh, but they've got a, a video showing Oktoberfest back in Germany from oh. previous years, that sort of thing. And mm -hmm. I should say, Peggy, it's every day. So uh, the club is, is oh, hoping that great. people who want just a real mellow experience, come out on a Monday or a Tuesday. It doesn't have to be on a, on a weekend, necessarily. Sounds great. Thank you so much. And over to Doug. And the Contemporary Arts Center has a very ambitious show and lots of food for thought there, too. Huh? Yeah, it's called Make America What America Must Become. And it's a, it's a marvelous collision of, uh, of different points of view uh, in a show. Um, consider the title. The title is a quote from the uh, author, activist James Baldwin, but it also brings to mind uh, Donald Trump's campaign slogan. So there we are, uh, 2020 in a nutshell. And, um, and the, the, the works embody those collisions. And you'll find things in there like a, um, an installation of travelers. But it's motionless. They don't get anywhere. It's a, uh, it's a, a video of, of travel unrealized. You'll find things like um, hand grenades uh, made, of, made of ceramics, a very fragile sort of precious material. You'll find things like, um, oh gosh, a, uh, um, th there's, the, uh, there's the installation that, uh, that implies travel without, without a rival. And uh, um, you'll find other things. Uh, it's just a marvelous, um, you know, to, to put something behind glass and then to paste something on the outside of the glass. It's just a, a, a great, uh, this is uh, maybe, the, uh, maybe the silhouettes of enslaved Americans where the uh, stars would be in a flag, maybe implying that uh, they are absent from a conventional view of American history. That sort of thing. This is uh, the use of fabric, the use of embroidery, uh, which is so precious and comforting, but it's used here to illustrate hunger and, and possibly homelessness. These are the sorts of things you find. You find traditional bronze busts, in this case of Abraham Lincoln, but, but they, they imply that, that society is making room for non-traditional values. There's uh, the hand grenades that I mentioned. Use of that precious material to imply something so violent. And here, once again, uh, the, these, these conflicts, you have a, an assault rifle, um, but it's pink. Um, it's sort of a feminist assault rifle. Highly recommend the show. Uh, give it some time. Look, look at it. Ask yourself these questions, and I, uh, I promise you'll enjoy it. All right. Thank you so much, Doug. And moving over to Alan with uh, Where There's a Will, There's a Way for some local theater groups, right? <laughs> Absolutely. You know, the first live performance in New York was just announced this week, Peggy. And while we're starting to see some in-house performances like at Rivertown, much of what we've seen so far this pandemic has been virtual. So while virtual is not live, there are some very good things that can happen in a virtual world. The NOLA Project, for example, does not like to be seen sitting in a position where they're not doing anything. And while they cannot perform their season so far this season, they, they have decided to come up with an idea, a four-episode podcast, if you will, series. And they mm -hmm. are having it as a subscription for $10 each or $35 for all four of the series. It's called Pod Plays. And the first of these Pod Plays is going to be by James Bartell, who we remember was the award-winning writer of The Spider Queen. Uh, James Bartell is a founding member of NOLA Project, and his work is going to be titled Alien Status. I have absolutely no idea what it refers to, but I'm sure that being penned by James, it's going to be, you know, he's a truly great actor, but he's going to be probably one of the, uh, a wonderful work, very interesting and worthy of consideration. I'm going to just 
go out on a limb and say, go watch it, go see it on demand starting October the 21st. $10 again per play or $35 for the series. Now, meanwhile, over at Le Petit, not to be outdone, uh, they are doing the best that they can while they await stage three to finish up. And uh, the biggest problem they've had, of course, is, is having some performances. So what to do to engage their players? Well, they actually have some radio plays that are online right now. First of all, they did the War of the uh, of the Worlds, their, their uh, Mercury Player of the Air, if you will, uh, War of the Worlds with H.G. Wells. Uh, that frightened the nation, of course, back in October of 1938. And they're also doing some frightening tales of Edgar Allan Poe, all of this just in time for Halloween. So so check that out as well. That's all on the Le Petit Theater uh, site. And, and so it appears that, uh, you know, we'll be celebrating Halloween uh, this way, uh, uh, unfortunately, not uh, knocking on the door for trick-or-treats. But if you'd like a little bit of a treat rather than a trick this season, uh, I'm going to recommend you tune in to the Happy Halloween Happening on Friday, October the 30th on the NOLA Theater Talk Show. And we're going to uh, stream it to the Facebook group that we have, NOLA Theater Folk, and the theatercriticism.com Facebook page, as well as my own YouTube channel. And we're going to have already, we've got set up a couple of personalities to sing some Halloween songs for us, some readings by a well-known playwright, and uh, I'm actually going to throw in a poem. <laughs> a throw in a poem. All right, Alan. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, th thank you so much. And then, of course, back over to Poppy for a little bit of a Bally High flavor. Exactly. You know, we've talked about Oktoberfest. And I've got the good news that last week, Latitude 29 reopened downtown. And that means the Beach Bum Berry is ready to keep you in a tropical good mood this weekend. I think it's very interesting. Despite the tropical winds, you can sort of have your own tropical storm down there with drinks like the Kia Colada, the Poncha Train Pearl Diver, which is an iced buttered rum. You will think you're back at Valley High if you have a zombie. <laughs> they, the menu is as fun as the drink cocktail with fried pickled squash chips. There's a fabulous coconut shrimp banh mi. Their chicken katsu. There's a regular burger, but there's also a dumpling burger, which is a seasoned pork patty on a Hawaiian bun with a delicious dumpling dipping sauce. So don't worry about those <laughs> tropical winds this weekend. Head on down to Latitude 29, and you'll just party up a tropical storm. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> Sounds good, Poppy. And over to Bywater, thanks to Ian. <laughs> Peggy, a new restaurant in the Bywater called Alma just opened up. Alma means soul in Spanish, and that is exactly what chef Melissa Arujo has put into this place. Alma is a restaurant exploring Honduran cuisine. Chef Melissa, her family roots are from Honduras, and uh, what she's doing here is combining the roots of, of that family heritage with her own lens as a modern chef. She's cooked at a very high level, at some upper echelon New Orleans restaurants, Dory Metropolitan being one, Restaurant Revolution another. But here at Alma, she wants to show who she is, she tells me, that she wants to uh, give people a glimpse of what Honduran cooking can be through a uh, 20, 20th century lens of a modern chef. There is uh, Chef Melissa with her sister, Anna. Chef Melissa has the tattoos. Uh, they are in their wonderfully uh, redecorated restaurant uh, with the, the Mayan goddess shell on the wall behind them. They're starting off with breakfast and lunch, uh, opening up very early for coffee in the morning, and eventually they're going to move over to add brunch and expand to dinner. Now, what the, some of the dishes you saw there, Peggy, are very traditional Honduran dishes. That first one, the baleada, that will... You eat that and you think, why do I want breakfast tacos? This is this is exactly what I want for breakfast. Eggs and soulful beans and crema and avocado on these tortillas that they make there at Alma, which are just so delicious. The texture, the chew to them, the toasty flavor, uh, the, the standards, the basics like that, the building blocks uh, are so good and fresh. And from there, she's exploring you know, some different ideas of uh, modern Honduran cuisine. We've seen this with Mexican restaurants that have taken the step up from the classic taqueria to a little more elevated look at Mexican cuisine. We've seen it with some South American cuisines. We've certainly seen it with a lot of European cuisines. What Chef Melissa is doing is applying that 
to Honduran cuisine. We do have a lot of Honduran restaurants in New Orleans. New Orleans has always had a big Central American uh, population. Uh, but the restaurants that we've seen from that community tend to be very traditional, uh, very, very much, uh, you know, casual walk-in in kind of places. What she's doing there is taking a bit of that, but adding, like I say, the modern style to it. So I'm really excited to see where it can go, and I'm excited uh, to see a new voice like hers in the culinary conversation in New Orleans. All right, and uh, p a quick P.S. that she is one of our kitchen queens in our national cooking series, so we have to brag on her that oh, way, yeah. too. Thank you so <laughs> much. And moving over to Doug, it's not Mardi Gras yet, <laughs> and we're still not quite sure what Mardi Gras will be like, but there's some ladies out there who are already thinking about it, aren't they? They, they certainly are. Um, I always talk about Mardi Gras in terms of art. It's a visual art, and it's also a performance art. And some of the great marching groups, some of the uh, some some of the dance groups and marching groups are great performance artists. And one that I had never heard of was the crew of Karens. And um, what's a Karen? So there's a, uh, there's a, uh, a social media, um, uh, sort of a pop description of a, of, a, uh, of a privileged woman taking advantage of her, of her stature, demanding to see the manager, demanding satisfaction <laughs> right now. That's a Karen. So uh, in 2019, a foreign, a forest ranger named uh, Danielle Wheeler uh, decided to to form a crew of Karens, and of course, it's it's very tongue in cheek. It's it's completely satiric, and they have they have marched twice so far. But 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 the amazing thing is they they managed to hit on to some very serious uh, topics. Uh, currently, uh, one aspect of the the Karen uh, character is an illustration of racism because some of these empowered. Karens have uh, have called the police on uh, on black people um, uh, famously in the news. Karens have also become a symbol for for those people who um, uh, women who won't wear a mask uh, during the COVID epidemic. Um, fairly or not, the, these things are, are part of the uh, are part of the image. And lastly, um, in the upcoming uh, presidential election, apparently. Um, Women in the suburbs are a uh, are uh, an important feature of the upcoming election. So the Karens uh, uh, tied themselves into all of that. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, Miss Parton is also getting her nod, isn't she? <laughs> yes, a, uh, a, a, a satirical, um, another satirical women's crew has popped up. Uh, uh, the the Dollies, and they are <laughs> they imitate Dolly Parton, the uh, the multi-talented uh, country and western singer, marvelous songwriter, actress, and and all-around icon. And and this is also very interesting. Uh, you know, you look at it, look at it as an artwork. What are they saying? Well, it's a, it's a very interesting take on feminism. Uh, you know, Dolly Parton is uh, Dolly Parton is a um, oh gosh, a beyond star. You know, she sure is. And um, uh, you know, if people I don't know if folks remember this, but there's actually there are other many other groups, but the Leisurettes, okay, sure. okay, and like. Princess Leia, and I did, I wasn't aware of the Beyonce, the the sort yes. of fan group of Beyonce. The, what is it, Beigerettes? Yes, the it's Beigerettes. hard to pronounce, but that's that's the point of it. And uh -huh. uh, and you know it, 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 these things are they're marvelous, and they they are so reflective of uh, of our culture. It's just terrific. I love it. Thank you so much. And back over to Alan. If there's one uh, of many unsung heroes in New Orleans in the local theater and musical community, it's Natasha Raymer. And I'm glad to see she's getting Absolutely. her due these days. Absolutely. Anybody who's familiar with the name Moscow Knights knows full well how Natasha Raymer has been uh, a part of our scene. She has been dedicated to theater and in particular things that revolve around her native Russia. Uh, of course, back in the old days, she was in the USSR, but she came to the United States and uh, she always involves herself in anything around that that former Soviet uh, sphere of influence. And Natasha is going to be my guest uh, on um, uh, tonight after stepping out to, to deal with a project that's really on the cutting edge of world politics, very relevant to what's going on right now in Belarus. We're going to be discussing a brand new play by Alexander Lukashenko. Uh, uh, and it's, um, uh, uh, again, that is the dictator, Alexander Lukashenko, and it's written by a fellow by the name of Andrei Kurechik. 
Uh, Karegchik uh, is from Belarus. He's been commenting on what's been going on. He's got a seven person character play that is going to be eventually produced over uh, the uh, NOLA Theater Folk Facebook group, et cetera, that we have. We're going to do that at the end of October. But first of all, we're going to talk about this conversation with her and several others, including the playwright that's going to be uh, tonight. And then, of course, archive for everybody else. Insulted Belarusia is what it's called. And uh, again, uh, we hope that everybody will check that out on October the 26th. Meanwhile, though, for those of you who are looking for a little bit more entertainment value, how many times have you been able to see Fan of the Opera lately? Well, you're going to have another opportunity uh, because as of right now and all the way through Sunday at 2 o'clock, you're going to be able to see the Ramin Camerlou and Sierra Bogus uh, production that was featured uh, back a few years ago, the 30th anniversary of Phantom of the Opera, the longest-running musical in Broadway history, and it's going to be seen on The Shows Must Go On. That's the Andrew Lloyd Webber channel on YouTube. Meanwhile, the Seth Rudetsky concert series is going to bring back Broadway belter and Tony Award winner Beth Level this week. Beth, who was, of course, nominated just last year for Tony for The Prom, won her Tony a few years back with The Drowsy Chaperone. And here's a photo, of course, with uh, yours truly with Beth at the NOCA series as well. All this is produced by uh, Mark Hartali. Beth Level will be seen on October the 10th, Sunday night, and then on Monday for the replay. And again, all of those on the weekly Seth Rudetsky concert series. Alan, that is one of the best deals, okay, to, to see the, you know, star of Broadway, lots of Broadway stars for $25, you know, and, and the show is like an, I've been, I've been doing it the last few weeks. It's been so much fun and it lasts for about an hour and a half and there's Seth yes. in Manhattan somewhere <laughs> playing on the piano. Yeah, he's, actually, he's actually in upstate New York, actually. Oh, upstate, he's, okay. He and, he and his, his Husband and, and, and daughter have all moved up to upstate New York because they couldn't deal with the gotcha. COVID crisis. So, any, so they're in upstate New York, and then their star might be in L.A. or maybe in midtown Manhattan. Right. And somehow exactly. they're incredible technical people sync it up, and they just play. And I've learned so much, and you know, backstage yeah. information and just about how one you know lives to perform on Broadway. Yeah. Isn't it? It is it's such and a really great it, opportunity. Fabulous. Andy Carl and Orifa was last week, and next week, Kiara, uh, Seattle, um, uh, 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 Kiala Settle, who you probably haven't heard of, but she was the lady with the beard, if you will, in The Greatest Showman, that with that incredible voice. She was in Waitress. I've seen her myself perform. Again, another one. We'll talk about that next week. Absolutely. And we should thank Mark Cartali, who lives most of the time yeah. in New York and New Orleans, because he's the producer. He's, he's pulling all this together. He's a New Orleanian by choice, as Yes, I say. and usually he <laughs> does these events at, what, NOCA and in Prague. Town. So, yeah, God bless him. Right. Thank you so much. And now it's time for our Picks of the Week. Puppy! Oh, Bell Guard Bakery did reopen on Apple Street this week. They're there from 10 until 5, Wednesday through Saturday. They've got new items available and new pizza. Take out pizza on Thursday. So, it's delicious. Order it. All right. <laughs> Ian! Uh, I've got to give one to my one of my favorite Vietnamese restaurants, certainly the place that taught me how to love Vietnamese food way back when, Phato Bay. They have reopened in the CBD on Tulane Avenue across from the old Charity Hospital. And uh, one of my favorite soups in the whole world is back there, Phato Bay wonton soup with glass noodles, please. Ian, I hope we see something good happen at Namese, where Namese was at Carrollton and Tulane. Um, hopefully, uh, something will be coming there soon. Do you think it was a chance? Or uh... oh, absolutely. Yeah, we reported a little earlier the uh, they're changing the concept from Namese to Boil Seafood House. Same owner, different concept with a Vietnamese take on boiled seafood. Okay, well, good. Okay, Doug. I am looking forward to a 2020 resonant uh, show um, at the at Noma called Mending the Sky, in which uh, 11 artists will produce installations that envision the world after natural disasters. Mm, my goodness. Okay, <laughs> Alan. <laughs> Well, you know, Peggy, we've been talking about getting more uh, diversity into theater. There are two free readings from the Atlantic Theater Company. I'm mentioning them now. They're going to be later in October, November, but you need to sign up now for free. The first is Skeleton Crew by Dominique Morisot. Of course, she was the book writer for Ain't Too Proud to Beg recently on Broadway. And Guards at the Taj by Rajiv Joseph. Again, all of these are plays that deal with issues reflecting on people of color, and I really recommend it very, very highly that you check these out. You need to get tickets now, webovationticks.com, or go to the 
Atlantic Theater Company site. I'll see you at the theater. Peggy. Okay, thank you, Alan. And now my <laughs> picks, continuing her uh, recurring series, WYES's Marcia Cavanaugh will host a panel of experts for living in the new normal, the race for a vaccine, and that's Sunday morning at 10 a.m. on WYES. And next Friday from 5 to 8 p.m., MS Rao and 40 other Royal Street businesses will be celebrating with an open house along the street. Yay! Call Revelry on Royal. The event will include live music, and many stores will be featuring special discounts. MS Rao will debut a new exhibit called Time Across Time, Clocks and the Art of Timekeeping. Go to msrow.com for details and details on Revelry on Royal and the new exhibit, too. Some really wonderful things. The Audubon Zoo will stage their peekaboo at the zoo for two weekends starting October 17th. Lots of activities for children during regular zoo hours and for the regular admission, too. So it's not a, an additional cost, all within COVID guidelines. That's the AudubonNatureInstitute.org. And uh, just found out, Hoda Kotb will be doing a virtual talk. She has a brand new book. She'll be doing a virtual talk and book signing through Garden District Books next Tuesday and Wednesday. GardenDistrictBookshop.com. Thank you all so much. And thanks very much for watching. Bye-bye. Support for Stepping Out comes in part from the Kristovich family in honor of Mary Lou and Bill Kristovich. This program is sponsored in part by the Eugenie and Joseph Jones Family Foundation, a local foundation proud to support the arts and culture in the greater New Orleans area. <laughs>